Proof of de Mauvray's theorem. So de Mauvray's theorem is a theorem that's used in complex numbers, but the proof of it is done using proof by induction. So P of n is cos theta plus I sine theta to the power of n. So basically kiss theta to the power of n is equal to cos n theta plus I sine n theta for all n values, elements of the natural number set. So i.e. s, our starting number, is 1, since 1 is the first number of our natural number set. So de Mauvray's theorem, if we have a power here, let's say this is the power of 6, then we would put 6 in front of each of the angles for cos and sine. So if you want a recap of this theorem and how it works in complex numbers questions, have a look at the complex numbers playlist for leaving third higher level. So this video is not going to do any examples using de Mauvray's theorem, it's just going to prove it. So since s is the starting number, we want to work out p of 1. So we want to substitute 1 in place of each of the n's. So we have cos theta plus i sine theta to the power of 1, so swapping that n there for 1, equals cos 1 theta plus i sine 1 theta. So we're swapping that n for 1 and that n for 1. So simplifying, we get cos theta plus i sine theta equals cos theta plus i sine theta, which is true. So we have shown that this is true for the starting number s is equal to 1. So step 2, assume p of k is true, i.e. that is cos theta plus i sine theta to the power of k equals cos k theta plus i sine k theta. So all we've done is swapped each of the n's for k. So this is our assumption, and we're going to use that to prove p of k plus 1. So p of k plus 1 is cos theta plus i sine theta to the power of k plus 1 is equal to cos k plus 1 theta plus i sine k plus 1 theta. So we're swapping that k for k plus 1 that k for k plus 1, and that k for k plus 1. These are two formulas from our formula book. We'll have a look at them in a second. So let's just focus on the left-hand side. So the left-hand side is cos theta plus i sine theta to the power of k plus 1. So the left-hand side is equal to cos theta plus i sine theta to the power of k plus 1. So this can be broken down as cos theta plus i sine theta to, to the power of k multiplied by cos theta plus i sine theta to the power of 1, because k plus 1 is k plus 1. So next we're going to multiply in the k. So the k is going to go in front of the angle for cos, and the k is going to go in front of the angle for i sine. So cos theta plus i sine theta to the power of k is equal to cos k theta plus i sine k theta. And then we just bring down the cos theta plus i sine theta. Next, we're going to expand the brackets. We're going to multiply out the brackets. So cos k theta multiplied by cos theta is cos k theta cos theta. And cos k theta multiplied by i sine theta is i cos k theta sine theta. So the i goes in front. And then i sine k theta multiplied by cos theta is i sine k theta cos theta and i sine k theta multiplied by i sine theta is going to be minus sine k theta sine theta. So where did the minus come from? Well i multiplied by i is i squared which gives us minus 1 which is just going to be minus. So here we've just multiplied out the brackets. Now we're going to start to group. So we're going to write down cos k theta cos theta here and put it with minus sine k theta sine theta and put brackets around it. So we're grouping together the real parts so there's no i's in any of these terms. So we have this term and this term and there's no i in either of them. Now we're going to group together the imaginary terms. So since there's an i common to both of these we can put the i first with brackets. So we have sine k theta cos theta plus cos k theta sine theta. So we have grouped them together. 
and cos k theta cos theta minus sine k theta sine theta can be rewritten as cos k theta plus theta. And this is because of one of the formulas from our formula book. So cos k theta cos theta matches up with cos a cos b and minus sine k theta sine theta matches up at minus sine a sine b and since this is equal to cos a plus b then this is equal to cos k theta plus theta because the k theta is the a and the theta is the b likewise i sine k theta cos theta plus cos k theta sine theta is equal to i sine k theta plus theta so sine k theta cos theta matches up with sine a cos b and plus cos k theta sine theta matches up with plus cos a sine b and since this is equal to sine a plus b this is equal to i sine k theta plus theta where k theta is the a and theta is the b so just don't forget the i in front so cos k theta plus theta can be rewritten as cos k plus 1 theta, so we're factorising out the theta. And i sine k theta plus theta can be rewritten as i sine k plus 1 theta, so again we're factorising out the theta. And this is equal to the right hand side. So the right hand side is cos k plus 1 theta plus i sine k plus 1 theta, and that's what we have here. So we started with the left-hand side, we started with this, and we showed that it is equal to the right-hand side. We showed that it is equal to this. Conclusion, hence, P of n is true for all n values elements of the natural number set, QED. So QED is Latin to just say that we've shown what we were asked to show. So step one was we subbed in S equals 1, and we showed that that was true. Step two, we assumed that P of K was true. And then we used our assumption of P of K to prove that P of K plus one was true. And we did. So just to remind you that this is where we used our assumption. So our assumption stated that cos theta plus I sine theta to the power of K is equal to cos K theta plus I sine K theta. So we had cos theta plus I sine theta to the power of K is equal to cos k theta plus i sine k theta. So this is where we used our assumption. So we used our assumption to prove this, and we did. So this is page 14 of our formula book, and this is where we got our two formulas that we used for the proof by induction.